Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Our special guest today is Adele Nazarian. She's the Senior Media Fellow at the Gold Institute. She's known for her many media appearances. She's an expert on Iran, the nuclear deal, and our relationship between the Americas and Iran. And that's why she's joining us today. Welcome, Adele. Thank you, Barry. It's such a pleasure to be on with you, the first of hopefully many, many more appearances. Absolutely. So let's talk about the Iran nuclear deal, commonly known as the JCPOA, crafted by American diplomats uh, Wendy Sherman and John Kerry. It was supposed to prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons. That was a lie when they made the deal, and it's a bigger lie today, and here we are going back into it. What would you say is the biggest failure of the JCPOA? You know, um, thank you for the question. I think not including the fact that human rights violations were not included and the handling of the Parchia nuclear site. Um, lots of failures. You know, the Obama White House had said that quote, appropriate access will be given to the nuclear site at Parachin. However, there was no access given. And in fact, it was considered off limits. So very, very hypocritical in that regard. And we all know, anyone who has been a close observer or not so close observer knows that the Natanz nuclear facility, which was the place that was given access within a certain time frame, was the one that was not was not the main site for development of nuclear um, nuclear capabilities. It was the Patreon site. And so I will also remind you quickly that in 2016, um, Rouhani, who is actually not running for re-election, the elections are being held in July of this year for a new um, president, president in Iran, he bragged in 2016 that the JCPOA, quote, was the cheapest way to achieve Iran's goals and interests. And he noted that in seven years, Iran can begin research and development and production of advanced centrifuges that are 25 times faster than existing ones. So as we know today, they're, they're much closer to having a nuclear bomb. And Israel, of course, is certainly up in arms, literally about it. You know, I remember Obama in the Rose Garden speech where he promised any time inspections everywhere with no notice. And he promised that would happen. And it was the biggest lie of them all. So now we have Wendy Sherman who was the lead negotiator for President Clinton on his disastrous Korean deal that was going to prevent nuclear weapons development in the Korean Peninsula. Oops, total failure. And she was rewarded for that failure to be the lead negotiator for the Iran nuclear deal. Oops, total failure again by Wendy. And now she's being rewarded by Biden, who just named her Under Secretary of State. How can a career of such failure be rewarded by three presidents, Clinton, Obama, and Biden? There, I, gotta tell you, I love you said, oops, <laughs> made a mistake. <laughs> um, so essentially, that, that's, that's, a, that's a catchphrase of the of, of, of chairman. I love it. So essentially, I think that the problem here is that Sure. The, the likes of Obama, Clinton, and now Biden, they underestimate America's enemies. It's, it's like Alzheimer's, right? You get abused <laughs> and you, or, or like the Stockholm syndrome, you get abused, you get hit over the head, you seem to forget and you go back to the same abuse and you're like, let's try this again. And the same cycle happens over and over again. I think the underestimation is what it was. Wendy Sherman, of course, um, bright woman, no doubt, but th just because you're bright or learned doesn't mean that you have necessarily the world view and understanding to be able to tackle such complex issues. The nuclear Iran deal, she said she learned the lesson from it, of course. The Iran deal lesson was not really learned there. It seems they're going into a second deal very soon. Um, I have a very bad feeling about it, to be honest with you. And I think that this is going to be the deal that will finally solidify the Iranian regime's uh, hold over the country and its people. Oh, God forbid. And to make matters worse, the Biden administration has now appointed the anti-Israel and pro-Islamic Republic Robert Malley as America's special envoy for Iran. Now, this is the guy that was involved in the JCPOA. It was a foreign policy disaster. And before that, Malley was one of the lead negotiators in 2000 at Camp David. 
And he sided with Yasser Arafat over the United States and Israel. And it turns out his father, an Egyptian communist, was a close confidant of Arafat. So how do we reward this guy? He's now our special envoy to Iran. It's astounding how we keep picking failures and rewarding them. So is Mali really going to sacrifice American safety to please his friends in Iran? I, I believe so. And I'll, I'll explain this. It's not just us that's concerned. Believe it or not, this is something that could, was very predictable. It's something called the Islamo-Leftism Alliance, right? You have Islamists and leftists. Once again, I want to clarify here. Um, I know, and I work with tons of people from different denominations, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, Christians, whatever it is. Um, Islamist organizations like the Council on American Relations, these groups that are radical Islamists do not represent the wider diaspora of Muslim people. Let's make that clear, right? Just like the Islamic Republic of Iran regime does not represent the vast swath the majority of the Iranian people. But there is an alliance between these Islamists and these leftists. And Rob Malley, frankly, is exemplary of this. And what it, it, it is similar to what's happening in America with the Black Lives Matter and organizations like CARE that team up together. So yes, it is a very distorted view. It is anti-West and it is anti-American at its core, whether or not they choose to accept and, and see it. But it's the Marxist core that is the problem and ideology. And so Bob Malley, I believe, is definitely going to appease the Iranian regime and going to help embolden them at, at the cost of, frankly, more American lives and more American security. If you think so, this any... Mm -hmm. So we have this series of failures. I mean, not even a little bit, but just gross failures in American diplomacy that we've detailed. So why is America returning to the appeasement of Iran? It failed completely the first time around. Everybody knows the JCPOA POA was a joke on the first day. Iran's been cheating ever since. They're getting very close to nuclear weapons. What is America thinking by saying, hey, let's do it again. We screwed it up the first time. Let's try again. Um, to, to answer your, your previous question previous question quickly, I think that it has to do with the victim mentality, just so you know. It's, it's a cycle, it's a victim mentality that allows them to keep accepting failures over and over again and thinking it's okay. It's the same psychology behind changing the letter F for failure to a U or a O to not hurt the feelings of the students that have received that poor marking. Moving on to this question though, I, I definitely do happen to think that um, America re-entering this deal again, appeasing Iran. There's a huge reason for America's expediency. The Biden administration's really rushed to get back into this. And it alludes back to the fact that July, um, June 18th, 2021 is when the next election for president will be held. Rouhani is termed out, cannot run again. And they're most likely worried that a more radical president will be elected by Iran's Supreme Council. Um, and because of that, I think they're in a rush to get this deal going um, before that occurs. It's at the top of their list. And what happens now is because of it, America is negotiating not from a position of strength, but from weakness. Because we, as America collectively now, because let's say the administration represents America now, let's be honest, um, is wanting this more than Iran. So I think more concessions will be made. I think it's, a, it's gonna be a real big problem. I just pray that countries like you know, Syria are included in terms of forcing Iran to at least be, you know, to, to leave the country and countries where Iran has a strong presence, um, part of the deal will be that they have to withdraw and countless lives can be saved. Adele, where can people find you? Thank you for asking. I am on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. My handle on all three, I believe, is at A-D-E-L-L-E-N-A-Z. It's N as Nancy. So Adele Naz. Got it. Thanks for joining us today. And thank you out there for tuning in to ATP Report. Remember, all of you out there that are watching us today, if you haven't subscribed yet, please take out your cell phone, text the word TRUTH in the message box and send it to the number 88202 push send, you'll be automatically subscribed to our text message alert system. It's 100% free and you'll get everything like this show with Adele in the palm of your hand. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.